Hey, I'm Meat Man. Welcome back to my weekly update series on the pinnacle of all fiction known as Kagurabachi. If you're new to the series and you're worried that this may be a bad entry point, don't be. Gone are the days of the big three shonen, and we don't have to suffer the hollowed shadow four anymore either. Now, we've arrived at the apex of all creation known as the decaying Dark Five. Everybody knows that Kagurabachi was able to end several dozen armed conflicts across the globe because senseless warfare prevents our fellow man from catching up on Chihiro's journey each week, as less people will be reading the manga if fans of the series die in combat. If you're wondering who Chihiro is, it's a name that fans have given the protagonist as we all know that MC is actually named Kagurabachi. In recent years, warfare has become harshly criticised not for the immoral nature of conflict and the impact it has on civilian lives, but instead how it damages the performance of each chapter if fans of the series die. Last week, the Blu-ray sales for the first five seasons of the anime adaptation sold so much that the publisher was effectively able to end world hunger and wealth inequality around the globe by donating 1% of the proceeds to numerous people facing financial hardship around the world. This is a year after the anime adaptation had successfully ended the Fifth World War, as conflicting parties recalled that Kagurabachi wakes up with hatred, but innocent lives are never caught in the crossfire on his quest for vengeance. But make no mistake, M10 is rated E for everyone. Now that the series has effectively solved the issues of geopolitical conflict, wealth inequality and famine, what could this series possibly achieve next? This week, Chapter 562 released and, oh man, it was one for the ages. Before One Piece, Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man were cancelled due to dwindling sales, I feel that each of those stories could have learned from the thoughtful and nuanced story of Kagurabachi. The chapter begins with our MC teaching Sephiroth how to properly wield a blade. While Sephiroth was an exceptional student with perfect form and ability, he lacked meaningful conviction from a real character such as Chihiro. Satisfied with the lessons he imparted to his student, our protagonist left the world of FF7, leaving Sephiroth to change the annals of history in time for FF7 Rebirth to release in 2024. Having fulfilled a promise to his late father to show inferior swordsmen how it's really done, Kagurabachi uses his world-traveling ability, which he learned from Kamen Rider Decade, to find another swordsman in need. Unfortunately, he traveled a little too far into the past, meeting a very young Yuta Okotsu, who had yet to begin his sword training. Unmotivated to help a young Yuta grieve the loss of his girlfriend, he tells Yuta that if he was in his position, he simply would have cut the car in half. Simply put, he would have stopped it from happening. Effectively telling him, that things would have been different if it was him. While this callous exchange is jarring at first glance, it was Rokuhira Chihiro who gave Sasuke Uchiha the idea that the world may need an enemy. Similarly, Yuta needed to see how despicable somebody else could act in order to remind himself of his kind heart and unbending resolve. Our MC knows that they will never meet again, so he plays the role of a villain to give Yuta a gentle shove forward so he might realize his true strength later in life. Kagurabachi went on to smoke some cheap gas station cigarettes with Toji, but this occurred off screen because the publisher wasn't sure if audiences could survive the pinnacle of male bonding. Something funny about this series is that a lot of readers talk about plot holes and time travel paradoxes regarding our MC's world traveling abilities, but the way our MC resolves his time paradoxes is incredibly simple. In the early chapters of the series, we see Kagurabachi chopping it up with Itachi smoking hookah with him during the second part of the series, as he has a little free time on his hands. Chihiro asks Itachi if he can get double apple, but Itachi tells him that he has to try the Konoha mango before he leaves this universe. While they're kicking back for about 3 hours and they're making plans to go kick it with some more friends, our protagonist tells Itachi that he needs to resolve any paradoxes before he leaves the world of Naruto, which is where Itachi teaches him how to use Genjutsu so that he can use it on anyone he meets so that he can resolve any mental paradoxes, effectively leaving the canon intact while still being able to steer the story in any which direction that he wants. Accordingly, Itachi doesn't remember his bro. He thinks that he was just smoking shisha by himself, and that part of his life is kind of hazy now. Despite the discrepancy in his memories, Itachi still longs for something that's missing from his life, because chilling with the Akatsuki isn't as interesting as hanging out and smoking shisha with your bros, something that really resonated with a lot of the audience. The chapter ends with Kagurabachi leaving the Akatsuki to continue their plans to destroy the Hidden Leaf or whatever happens in that series, and, well, we know what happens to Itachi from there. The tragic fate of Itachi is not one that even Kagurabachi can change. Much like our protagonist, Sasuke must wake up every day with fresh hatred, and killing his brother Itachi was essential to that happening. Solving the issues of the ninja world is no issue for our MC. Even Itachi understood this about him, but it would be wrong of a being so benevolent and powerful such as Kagurabachi to enact his own will simply because he could. 
that would be going against his friend's wishes in the process. And everybody knows that you never dog the boys. The moral of this chapter was that in life you arrive at many crossroads, but at no point of desperation, hardship, or even boredom should you dog your friends. A recurring theme in the manga is that the bond between men is a sacred one, and saving Itachi even though he wishes to die by his brother's hand is tantamount to disrespecting a person he smoked a lot of shisha with. We could sit here all day and talk about things like subtext and execution, but we all know the impact of Kagurabachi is self-evident. Following the release of this chapter, literacy rates around the globe had risen to 100% owing to a dramatic uptake in peak fiction, combined with boys around the world pledging to be better men. They would, of course, still walk the path of vengeance, but sometimes being him means smoking with your friends or telling a child he should have just prevented a tragedy from happening. Critics may call it callous or borderline nonsensical, but I don't think Attack on Titan ended the Fifth World War, and Eren Yeager isn't half the man that Kagurabachi is. Now that we've covered the plot summary, let's dive into the analysis section which runs for about 19 hours on average.